Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our 12th video on air law, radio communications. We're on the home stretch for our air law, the death pump by uh, PowerPoint that I have been so brutally subjecting you to for the last few hours. At this point in your training, uh, this lesson is pretty short even though there's actually a lot to it. The reason for this is because there's mostly overlap with the radio license exam. So at this point you should have read through the radio license study guide, spent some time studying that. When you study that, put that in that time in your ground school uh, record because it is part of your ground school. But I'm just going to talk about some of the things that are most pertinent uh, to the examination and I'll leave the radio license stuff up to uh, you to study on your own and to practice with your instructor. Okay, we can recall from our last lesson, I'll emphasize it again, you should maintain a continuous listening watch on the appropriate frequency, 126.7 when you're in cruise. Talk about a communication failure. This is in red, so remember red is something that can be emphasized on the exam if you have a two-way radio communication failure in VFR flight. So this is kind of the procedure that we want you to, or the, the powers that be want you to know. But like I mentioned earlier in the last, I believe last lesson, the number one reason that there are radio communications failure is because pilots screw up the audio panel. They're transmitting on the wrong radio. They have the volume turned down. They accidentally pulled their headset jack out, um, all sorts of things. And often they're not two way failures. They uh, just pulled their, you know, they're not listening or something like that. And air traffic control can hear everything they're saying, but they can't hear anything that air traffic control is saying. So a bit of common sense, try to call air traffic control on the cell phone. Everyone has cell phones these days. Hopefully you can look in the Canada flight supplement for the uh, frequency or the, sorry, the uh, phone number for the airport or the, uh, the control tower. Try giving them a call. If you're in a class C or D controlled airspace, leave uh, um, airspace, leave the airspace by landing. Uh, you can land at that airport, like I explained earlier, you can overfly the tower, circle until they can figure out what's going on. You're going to squawk 7600 on your transponder. Make sure you get this right. It's 7600. 7500 is a hijacking. You do that, they're going to send the police, maybe the SWAT team. You will look like a fool. 7600 uh, for a communication failure. If you're in a Class B airspace, leave by shortest route. That's descending. And you run it notify air traffic control as soon as possible. So give them a phone call on the ground, apologize, say, hey, here's what happened. Some questions about ATC instructions. An ATC instruction, A, must be complied with when received by the pilot, providing the safety of the aircraft is not jeopardized. Sounds pretty good, let's read the rest one. Must be read back in full to the controller and confirmed before becoming effective. Well, that's not correct. It has to be read back, but it doesn't have to be read back to become effective. It, it has to be, it's effective as soon as uh, you receive it. C, if an effect advice provided by ATC and does not require acceptance or formal acknowledgement by the pilot in command, that's like children. Children don't, don't understand that an instruction's an instruction. It's not just advice and does not need to be accepted. So that one's not right. It's the same as an ATC clearance? No, it's not. So correct answer A, must be complied with when received by the pilot. An ATC clearance, so remember it's different from an instruction, so that knocks A out, is in fact advice provided by ATC and does not require acceptance or acknowledged by PIC? No. Requires compliance when accepted by the pilot command. Must be complied with when received by pilot command. So this is a tricky one. The correct answer is going to be C because a clearance requires compliance when it's accepted. So when you say, clear for takeoff and when you accept that clearance that's when it becomes compliant that's when you need compliance where d would be an instruction here's a common sense one again a pilot after accepting a clearance and subsequently finding that all or part of the clearance cannot be complied with should a disregard the clearance uh, might be a bit harsh b comply with only the part that is suitable eh, maybe let's keep reading C, comply as best under the circumstances to carry out the clearance and need not say anything to ATC. Well, let's think about that. So it starts off good, but should we not say anything to ATC? 
No, that, that sounds like a bad idea. D, comply as best as possible under the circumstances and advise ATC as soon as possible. Yeah, that's going to be the, your most correct answer. D, you're going to do the best you can, and if you can't, you let ATC know. An ATC clearance or instruction is predicated on known traffic only. Therefore, when a pilot is proceeding in accordance with a clearance or instruction, so remember, everything is always the pilot command's responsibility. A, ATC is relieved of the responsibility for traffic separation. Well, uh, I don't think any, they are ever relieved of any of their duties. B, the responsibility for traffic separation is divided by ATC and pilot. Uh, no, remember, it's always the pilot's responsibility. The pilot is not relieved of the responsibility for traffic avoidance or D, the pilot is relieved. Well, we know it's always, everything's always the pilot's fault and the pilot's responsibility. And that's why they make the little money that they do. The correct answer is C. More ATC clearance questions. You can tell clearances and instructions is a, a pretty important thing on the licenses. And that's why it's so emphasized. Uh, if all or part of an ATC clearance is unacceptable, the pilot should. So let's just think about this just logically use a bit of common sense, comply as best under the circumstances, that's probably right. Refuse the clearance without giving a reason, uh, that's probably not a good idea. It's not a marriage or anything like that. C, acknowledge the clearance and reback only of the acceptable parts. Uh, no, that would just be confusing. Or refuse the uh, clearance and inform ATC of the pilot's intentions. Okay, this comes down to a most correct answer. It's going to be D, you're just going to refuse the clearance and inform ATC. Okay, that concludes this lesson on radio communications. I encourage you now to start studying your radio operator's study guide, find an examiner on the Industry Canada website and obtain your radio license. You will require to do that before your first solo flight. Okay, we'll talk to you in the next lesson.